Hey now. Welcome back to my Dark Souls Filthy Casual Run. My name is Rob. Last time we went through the Duke's archives and opened up the shortcuts and everything and prepared myself for facing the boss. As well as helping out little Onion Broet. Onion Dudet? Onion Sis. There we go. Oh, hello again. We're both managing quite well, aren't we? But I haven't found my father yet. Have you seen him? Even though we haven't seen him in a while, we have seen him, so yes. Really? Then I must be off. I'm sorry he's caused you trouble. He has a knack for that. If you just stay put. Really? Yeah. I don't know. Old Sigmar hasn't really caused us much of any trouble. He just kind of, uh bumbling guy. But eh, if you want to continue on with the quest, that's how you do it. Let's see, I don't really need fall control for this area, so I'm going to give myself some probably great lightning spears. And I don't plan on buffing a weapon either, so... Hmm. I'll just do this. Maybe emit force. That way I'll have plenty of ranged attack for this next part. I'm gonna go down into New Londo and do some exploring. First, let me use that Firekeeper Soul I got in the last episode. Now we got an Estus Flask plus five. It's more than enough to heal us as much as we need for the time being. myself some transient curses ready because I'm gonna need them again not gonna be facing the boss of this area I just want to open up the way and if you're using just a regular uh, standard weapon and not an elemental one there's an ember in this place for getting that type of weapon up to as strong as it can get so it's vital that you come here and do that for, you know, having the best attack out of your weapon. Not a bad idea to do it immediately after uh, An Orlando, but I chose to go to the Duke's Archives first to get the DLC key, which is the Broken Pendant, just so I'd go ahead and have it. And I wanted to talk to Siegland. I'll go ahead and keep going with Sigmire's quest. So use the Transient Curse to where you can damage ghosts. Otherwise, only other ways to cause any harm to them is either to be cursed with a cursed status effect, which I was never able to actually show when I tried to show it. But if you're under the cursed status effect, you can damage ghosts. And they also have a chance to drop a jagged ghost blade, which is a cursed weapon that will allow you to damage them with it. But they drop transient curses pretty frequently as you can see so it might be a better idea for you to just use them there we go there's already what seven contraption does not move and don't try to drop down there or you'll die a lot of ambushes in this particular area but ghosts don't really like fire in this game so that works well enough on them but just use whatever weapon you've got that's doing decent damage. Any weapon that you're comfortable using. Let's see. Yeah. Alright, it's so gonna come down here. Oh, New Londo. It's another one of these areas that I really like atmospherically. Not my favorite, but I still do like the area. Get a parrying dagger from this corpse. Have a look at that. This dagger is useful after parrying and is normally equipped in the left hand, a favorite of the Knights of Kareem who are famous for fighting without a shield. There's three NPCs in the game I can think of that use it in battle. First of all, 
uh, Night Lautrec, of course. He uses a parrying dagger. The uh, Enerlando Firekeeper. She uses one. I don't know if you could tell when I was fighting her. And uh, if you happen to aggro Oswald of Kareem, the partner, he also uses a parrying dagger. The ghosts that scream like that are unique. They're actually female. And if you look closely at them, if you get a chance to, it's kind of hard to do because they immediately attack you. Kick down this ladder. It's a shortcut. Uh, they're s seen holding like a infant. So the ghost of a mother and child, if you will. They're unique in that they can throw lightning spears and stuff at you. Now at this point, just to make life a little bit easier on myself, I'm going to quit out. Which will put all the ghosts back in their original spawn points. And allow me to reapply the transient curse before it runs out. Because I don't want to end up having it run out in this next area I'm fixing to go into. So we go ahead and use one. I'm already up to 15 of them. Let's see. Yeah. I'm going to stand out here. There's going to be a few come up out of that water that I'm going to try to get from a distance. Well, looks like the whole neighborhood's coming out now. Trying to target one and getting hit by a bunch of others, but that's fine. Just gives me a chance to deal with them all at the same time. Let me try and aggro these few more that are down here. Bows and crossbows work really, really good at this part, too, for getting them from a distance. I just happen to be using the lightning spears. They're not especially weak to it, but Great Lightning Spear is doing just enough damage to take them out in one hit, so works well. Only three should be coming up from that area. Now, if you want to skip this little house altogether, you can by jumping across here. But there's stuff in here that I want to get in an NPC I definitely need to talk to. So just be forewarned, big ambush in this place. Get ready to deal with a bunch of ghosts. It's good to come in this area with some poise, whether you're getting it from the wolf ring or from some heavier armor. Because the ghosts will happily stun lock you to death in a heartbeat. That might be all for this one particular room, but there's more in here. If you wander around these outer halls, there'll be plenty more come up. Like right there, for instance one coming down from the ceiling yeah no need to call the Ghostbusters when you've got transient curses ah need to heal because I'm gonna die I don't want to die that was a ghost for a second. That was just a little phantom. Alrighty. Let's see. Before I proceed into the middle of this little building. There's something else. Yeah. Oh, I want to come over here. This leads out into this doorway where that gap is there. You could jump across. come around here there's a certain ring I want to get which can definitely come in handy curse bite ring what it does is just gives you a ton of curse resistance which is already difficult to get cursed normally anyway but when you get into the boss fight with Seath the Scaleless he has the potential to curse you and he has an easier time inflicting it than regular enemies so not a bad idea to equip the Curse Bite Ring in the fight with him. Hmm. I'll go ahead and try to read that description and see if something comes out to attack me. One of the infamous Bite Rings, commissioned by Sir Arstor of Kareem, 
Despite the dreadful rumors surrounding its creation, this ring is an unmistakable asset in its ability to help prevent curses. If you look closely at the little sprite for it, you can see a skull head kind of in the center there. So who knows what he did to create it. I'm going to just her, see if I get attacked. That might have been all the ghosts, but I seem to remember there being more than that. But I don't know. So what do we have here? An NPC wearing the Crimson set. We'll finally meet up with him. Well, this is a surprise. I get few visitors, save for ghosts. You have the Lord Vessel. Very impressive. I know exactly what your intentions are. You seek the four kings whom I guard over. This is the key to the seal. The four kings slumber in the deepest chamber of the ruins. Use this key to break the seal and open the floodgates. Oh, and do not forget, the dark wraiths reside in a dark void called the Abyss. But the Abyss is no place for ordinary mortals. Although, long ago, the Knight Artorius traversed the Abyss. If you can find him, and learn from him. The abyss may prove surmountable. Yeah, the first mention of Artorius we get in this particular playthrough. Let's have a look at that key. Key to the floodgates of New Londo, which seal away the four kings who fell to dark. The sealers flooded New Londo to banish the dark wraiths and the four kings. The agonizing decision was made with the realization that countless lives and the robust culture of the city would be lost. The victims now roam the ruins as ghosts. There's pretty much your whole, all you need to know about New Londo. It's all the lore right there. Hello there. What is it? The key to the seal is now in your hands. I will help you in any way possible. So, if you're cursed, one of the options for getting uncursed other than using a, um... I can't remember the name for the item now. But the item that breaks curse, which you can buy from the female undead merchant. You can just have him break the curse, which honestly is probably more trouble than it's worth because you have to go through all those ghosts to get to him. You can purchase transient curses from him, as well as resist curse. Sorcery of the Red-Robed Remediation... Rem... Remed... Remediation... Yeah, I bet that's how you pronounce that. Ingward, guardian of the seal in New Londo. Sacrifice humanity to undo curse. Abhorrent curses eat away at the core of one's very existence, and cleansing oneself of curses is no easy task indeed. So, you can get a spell that banishes curses at the cost of a humanity. Uh, let me talk to him and see what other dialogue he's got for me. I know that, but keep... New Londo was sacrificed to contain the Dark Wraiths. Mark my words, the Dark Wraiths are the enemies of man and any living thing that has a soul. They were never meant to roam again. New Londo would mark my... They were... Yeah, so definitely anti-Dark Wraith. Ingward is. If you want to. Now he'll only give you that key if you've already gotten the Lord Vessel. However, you can kill him for it before, you know, like doing anything else in the game if you would ch if you chose to. If you kill him, he'll drop the key to the seal. Like, for instance, if you want to explore New Londo um, by draining it before you do anything else. You know, that, that does have its uses. But for the particular playthrough I'm doing, that's not a whole lot of reason to do it. Get some humanity. It would seem that pretty much all the ghosts in this little church thing are taken care of because... 
Yeah, if you stand here and there's any of them left in that building, they'll come after you. Treasure ahead, indeed. If you come over here, get ourselves another rare ring of sacrifice. Let me see here. Uh, where can I drop down at? Or is it safe to drop down at? It's kind of difficult to see, but I think I can drop down here. Yeah. There we are. If you come straight over here... I'm lying. Or was I trying to... No, it's like over there. Let me see. There's a green Titanite shard if you want to get one early in the game by coming this way. For first time players, you know, obviously I don't really recommend that because the ghosts can be kind of hard to kill. In big groups, I mean, if you take take them all one versus one, there's nothing to them, but there's so many that'll come after you at once that, yeah. So there's a green shard there. I get this key to the seal. And the seal is nothing more than just a regular old iron bar door <laughs> it's kind of silly then we push the lever to actually drain new Londo to where we can explore it further is drained and we can explore the bottom of it now. Come down here and you see just piles and piles of corpses. A scene that the key to the seal kind of described. And we're greeted by a new enemy, the Dark Wraith. Now, parrying is not necessarily recommended if you're new to the game because I had the hardest time learning to parry these guys effectively because they can strike really, really fast. But holding your shield up and backstabbing them is definitely very effective and that's the preferred way of taking them out. They don't have very strong resistances to fire either so if you've got Quillag's Fury Sword or a Chaos Weapon or whatever works just fine against them. Yeah. They have a chance to drop Titanite Chunks as well as uh, a very very rare chance to drop a Titanite Slab can be used for upgrading lightning weapons, standard uh, upgrades, and crystal. And we got another new enemy just around the corner there. That should have been a backstab. What's going on with that? There we go. Yeah, it's just this weird thing with a face that pukes on you. not a huge deal to worry about so I'm gonna go ahead and take out this other dark rate so he doesn't try to get in on the action there we go this thing will emit the um, exploding skull heads that you see in the catacombs he'll barf at you throw a spear thing at you which is his tongue I guess I don't know what kind of abomination that enemy is supposed to be. But they don't respawn, and they give you 5,000 souls. Yep, if you're not careful, that's how that'll go. They definitely attack very aggressively most of the time. I 
definitely have a difficult time parrying them. Unless they do the one attack that's like a... Um, kind of a running stab. And I just realized also... I forgot to grab an item back here that I wanted. Let me run back here real quick and get it. By the way, this door that opens... Opens up to the Valley of the Drakes. And I haven't actually really... Explored the Valley of the Drake, Drakes this playthrough. I guess really because I didn't have to for, you know, the way I'm building my character or anything. Even though there's some stuff there. It's not a big area, but... It's got some neat stuff. Yeah, at this point I'll just... Explore it later on, I guess. Try to get myself acclimated here. The item in question that I want... It's through here. You can kind of look down at the Valley of the Drakes from this angle. Yeah. A composite bow along with some large arrows. The composite bow is one of the highest damaging bows in the game because of its uh, starting uh, attack power. It has a C scaling in both strength and dex. Low stat requirements. But the shortest range of any of the bows as well. It's even shorter than the short bow. But it makes up for it with its attack power. Composite bow emphasizing power requires more strength than standard bows. However, its range is shorter, making it unfit for sniping. Well, you know, you can always make up for that by equipping the hawk ring if you need to. It's just a really good attack bow. And usually if I'm going to upgrade any one particular bow in the game, it's going to be the composite bow. Just simply for the damage. And if you're worried about stat scaling, you can always just make your bow chaos and uh, purchase a bunch of fire arrows to shoot from it. And that works out pretty well. Alright, so back to where I was going. I'm always forgetting stuff and having to run back. Bad habit. Alright, so back into this room. I think it's this way? Yeah. Soul of a brave warrior there. Then go this way. Whoops, I almost fall off the ledge there. Keep going, go up this staircase. Amazing ember ahead. Yes, indeed. The very large ember, which is used for plus 15 weapon ascension. Can't really make use of it right now, but I will eventually. Ember required for weapon ascension. Huge ember of highest quality, handled by the blacksmiths of Astora. Like Andre of Astora. So the main reason to come here really early in the game is to, you know, kill Ingward for the key to the seal, go ahead and drain New Londo, and get the um, very large ember. And in doing so, I mean, you can have a plus 15 weapon before you even go to Anor Londo. It's not necessary, it's a little overkill, but you can do it. There's a Dark Wraith over here. That attack in particular is a bit easier for me to parry. Really about the only attack they do that I can parry consistently. Got an illusory wall right here. Along with a dark wraith just hanging out. I'm gonna pop him with a lightning spear. Yeah, not the best damage, but not terrible. Get on now. It's a narrow walkway right through here. With another Titanite chunk. How many does that make so far? Oh, just two? Oh well. I've already got a fully upgraded lightning weapon. I don't plan on making a crystal weapon. 
but I do have a uh, standard weapon in mind. I want to upgrade a plus 15. A weapon that'll be a good buff carrier for uh, lightning blade and everything. Or sunlight blade, rather. Alright, there's some enemies in here. Try and get their attention. I don't want to run in there and get ambushed by all three of them. Deal with that first dark grave. There we go, he dropped a chunk. There's another dark wraith in here as well as another one of those weird blob things. No, sir. No. Get. Alright, here he is. Let's go ahead and just R1 spam away. Once again, those things don't respawn, thankfully. It'd be a real pain if they did. Over here we have another Titanite chunk. The game gives you several freebies, and I think, you know, by the time you've gotten all the freebies laying around, it's you know, you usually have enough to upgrade to a plus 15 weapon or a lightning weapon. Not necessarily both, though. Another chunk. Yeah, five. It's a decent amount. What's this say? Dead hint. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. So even if I wanted to fight the four kings at this point, be wary of ring, yeah. You need a particular ring in order to face them. Remember, Ingward men mentioned uh, traversing the abyss, learning from Artorius in order to do that. Which I haven't done yet. But that's pretty much new Londo. I've gotten everything that there is to get in it, so. Yeah. That's going to be mostly it for the video, but I want to see if there's some dialogue unlocked from uh, Andre. And while I'm at it, I can go ahead and drop off this ember with him for whenever I decide to upgrade a weapon to plus 15. I'll give it to you for free. Well, thank you mightily for that. Now, just leave the rest to me. Andre of Astora gets the job done. You shall see. Alrighty. So now, of course, we go to modify weapons, and you can modify shields up to plus 15, which is recommended, as well as your weapons. I'll modify the grass crystal the, the grass crest shield some more later. Let's see if he's got any more dialogue now. This is the old church. It was abandoned in favor of the church that you passed through. There are paths leading from here to two forbidden plains, Sen's fortress and the Dark Root Garden. They attract all sorts of lunatics. No one as cultured as yourself. It's fine to be undead. But keep a level head, eh? <laughs> he called us culture. <laughs> That's funny. Sen's fortress is an old proving grounds built by the ancient gods. It is the only route leading to the great Anor Londo. 
Of course, most fools can't even find their way into that fortified death trap. But they won't stop trying. Take that bumbling Saranyan. <laughs> yeah. The first mention of Sigmar being an onion. I know little of the Darkroot Garden, although I've heard rumors of a divine blacksmith who resides there. Those who get stumped in the catacombs seek him for divine weapons. I feel like I should have gotten some of this dialogue already. But oh well. Oh yes. And one other thing about the Darkroot Garden. It is said to house the grave of Sir Artorius, the Abyss Walker. Only of those who ventured into the forest, none has returned. Hmm. So Ingward mentioned meeting with Artorius. Well, uh, Andre mentions visiting his grave. Hmm. Oh, yes. In order to do that, I have to get the crest of Artorius. This crest opens a door in the darker garden sealed by ancient magic. The door leads to the grave of Sir Artorius the Abyss Walker. Many adventurers have left for the grave, but none have returned, for they make easy prey for local bandits. With such dangers, the crest can do more harm than good in the hands of the uninitiated. Well, I'm initiated enough, so I'll go ahead and buy it and go ahead and have it since I have so many souls. Don't get yourself killed. Neither of us want to see you go hollow. Yep, yep. Alrighty, y'all. I think that'll do it for that part. As always, thank y'all so much for watching. I'll see you soon with more Dark Souls Remastered, and until then, y'all take care.